so my friend turned on night shift here so i don't actually know if i'm gonna look the same or darker or lighter or whatever but cool <laughs> you just think everything is ill acquired every good is ill gotten but you don't trust that god can do all of these wonderful things for you solomon was so rich i'm sure solomon and oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my god oh my god solomon got to a point in his relationship with god when god asked him yeah what do you want instead of him to say god give me oh, i can't even say car because they didn't have cars instead of him to say god give me cattle oh give me livestock give me land so that i can reproduce crops god give me a wife even though he had eight more than 800 concubines god give me children instead of him being like god i want this i want that he asked god for two things oh my days let me uh, he asked god he said god I just want the ability to rule your people justly. I want to be able to rule justly this land that you have given me. This land that you have made me king over. I want to rule the people righteously. I need wisdom to rule this land justly. I need wisdom to be able to carry out certain things justly, righteously. I want to be able to make decisions that are just and righteous in your eyes not in relation to the people i need wisdom i literally just want you to give me the wisdom that i desire in order to justly rule your country that's what he asked god for and god being the faithful god that he is oh my goodness god being the faithful god that he is he said mm, i've seen your heart's desires and i will give you everything that you've asked for and guess what because of the fact that you did not ask me for riches, you didn't ask me for wealth, I'm still going to give you these things. Do you see? This is the importance of seeking God first. I'm not telling you to seek God so that you can get rich after. No, but your desire, your primary desire, your heart's desire needs to actually just be God. It needs to be God. Look at Solomon. He is a prime example of what seeking God can do for you, of what trusting God can do for you. We need to get to a point in our relationship with God when we're literally just like, God, I just need you to help me to steward everything that you've given to me. God. I need my heart's desire to be you. I want to forget everything else in this world. I want to forget everyone else in this world. And I just need to focus on you. Whatever comes after, comes after. My primary desire is you. You are the only thing that I want. You are what I need. You are a necessity. You are not an option. I don't only call upon you when I need healing, when I need help, when the going gets tough and the tough gets going. But I call upon you every single day to worship you to praise you to give you your rightful position in my life as number one that needs to be your first focus your first focus needs to be god i keep repeating matthew 6 33 seek first the kingdom of god seek first the righteousness of god seek god first seek god over your studies seek god over your family seek god over your marriage seek god over your children seek god over your church Yes, we go to church only once a week. You think that's enough to nourish you? You think that is enough to nourish you? It's not enough. Seek God for yourself first. The pastor's also human. He can also make a mistake. He can also speak from a place of opinion. And he can also speak from a place of experience, which is nothing to do with you because you've lived different lives. You're going through different paths. So you need to seek God for yourself to get the answers you need for yourself, for you to have peace for, for yourself. I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not trying to have someone else's life dictate mine. No way someone can't have peace on your behalf oh yeah my mom's my mom's at peace for me what does that make sense someone can't have peace on your behalf someone can't have riches on your behalf someone can't have wealth on your behalf you need to do that for yourself you need to get to a place where you're seeking god for yourself for yourself and by yourself
Seek God for yourself and by yourself. He doesn't even give stone to, to children who ask for bread. Never, ever, ever, ever. And listen to this. <laughs> Guys, no, this is exciting. Listen to this. The Bible even says, yeah, this is David speaking. David said this. I was young. I grew old, but in all the time since I was young until I grew old, I have never seen a righteous person abandoned, nor his offspring begging for bread. What? Nah, 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 nah. Somebody say lingy, guys. As I pin boy, because David, David said he's never ever seen a righteous person. Someone who is upright, walking with integrity, seeking God first, fulfilling their portion, being obedient, being disciplined, stewarding everything that has been entrusted to them. David has never seen an individual like that, their offspring begging for bread. He, oh God, God is faithful even to the, the thousandth generation. Anyways. <laughs> very quickly my last point we are humans we are humans as much as we are spirit we are humans it is not your spirit that is roaming around on the earth we are humans tozana misu tozana nzoto we have mouths we have eyes yes we are spirit and our spirit lives inside the envelope which we call our body it is not your spirit i repeat that is roaming around on the earth because if we were just to see our spirits peut-être rokima you see just a spirit walking around no 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 you'd you would run you would actually run as i was saying it is not your spirit that lives and roams on the earth it is your body we are encapsulated our body encapsulates a spirit we are like butterflies we are in a, a um whoo, that's a great analogy boy we are butterflies the butterfly essentially is your spirit and what we are now we're caterpillars, you know what I'm saying? We're caterpillars in the cocoon and we're not ready to hatch yet. When you hatch and become the butterfly, that's when you, you okay, well, do you get what I'm saying? But for the time that we are here, it is not your, your, your spirit that is roaming the earth. It is your body. So I don't understand. I don't understand how some people expect they expect to be doing skirt skirt in the lamborghini ferrari aston martin soki um I, I don't know um bentley you're gonna be doing skirt skirt in heaven your spirit is gonna be driving that car in heaven is that <laughs> is that what you guys think that your spirit is gonna be driving car in heaven you can't you haven't even <laughs> This is a mad thing. Nah, no, that's actually a mad thing. Because you think that you're going to be able to live your best life in heaven. On earth, go to nano bandite. The Bible says there is a time for everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. There is a time for everything under the sun. If you keep going further down that chapter, you will see that it even says this. We need to enjoy our lives on the earth. And in verse 13 of that same chapter, it says that every man should eat, every man should drink, and every man should enjoy the fruit of their labor. What is your labor? Going back to point one, the gifts and the talents that God is giving you, that you are nurturing and you're supposed to be multiplying. You need to reap the benefits of it. If you do not sow... You're not going to be able to reap the benefits of your gifts or your talents. We're called to live our best life. We're called to live our best lives on earth. We're called to have a happy life. How can you expect to be joyous and, and so happy in heaven? How can you expect to be jubilated in, in heaven? But here, you're wor every day you're worried. Why are you worried about tomorrow? Tomorrow will take care of itself yeah don't worry trust in god but how can you expect to live your best life in heaven how can you expect to be happy excited screw screw in heaven but on earth you can't even live your best life the bible says this yeah in john chapter 10 verse 10 the enemy the enemy comes only to steal to kill and to destroy but i i being jesus i have come so that you can have life and life in all of its fullness in all of its abundance i don't know about you 
I don't actually know about you, but if Jesus is telling me that he's come so that I can have life and life in this abundance, I, I ain't trying to be poor. I ain't trying to be broke. I ain't trying to be unhappy. I'm, tr I'm trying to have life. Like when I mean life, I'm talking about life. Like I'm talking life, living the best life. That's what I'm talking about. When Jesus said he came so that we can have life and life in its fullness, it doesn't just mean little, little things. Like, you know, it means enjoy your life, have your nice car, have your nice house. Like, you know, the little things, the little things, guys, it's the little thing. Have your nice car, have your nice house. It is not a sin. It is not a crime. It's not a sin. It's not a crime. Everything in life is about balance balance is key even the bible says that god himself was a god of balance when he made light he also made darkness and he separated them when he made day he also made night when he made adam he also made eve balance equilibre you know you need to have balance find that in proverbs 11 verse 1 balance you need to have balance it is good for us to be balanced individuals if we are supposed to be like god replicate god do the things that god does oh my goodness how can we be unequal people how can we be people sans equilibre you have no balance in your life you can't just expect nice cars nice house nice everything in heaven heaven is everyone there to worship do you get what i'm saying that's what it's going to be. But you expect to be doing screw it, screw it. Have you even done your driving license? Huh? Yeah. It's not a crime to, to be wealthy. It is not a crime to live your best life on earth. Even Proverbs chapter 8 verse 18, it says, Riches and wealth are with me, me being God me being god and so is righteousness and wealth god is the giver of everything it's the devil that copies god it's the devil that tries to do everything that god did when um aaron was told to drop that rod the rod transformed into a snake did you not see that that snake engulfed it consumed <laughs> it destroyed the snakes of pharaoh and the other prophets the false prophets yes it took over them why because the devil he just imitates god nothing that he has is his own as a copycat he's a copycat he has no original ideas what he does is he plagiarizes as I, the biggest plagiarist i've seen on earth the devil he just plagiarizes he takes everything that is not his everything that he does he replicates is the things of god that's it because he can never be god i'm not against the prosperity gospel but it's i'm not that's not what i'm here for i'm not here to tell you god's gonna do this god's gonna do oh yeah that's fantastic god is gonna do it but i'm literally here to broaden people's mind allow you to reach a place of scrutiny self-reflection a place where your faith goes from one dimension to another because you're looking at all the facts you're saying oh do you know what god did this for this person god did this for this person Person. i'm sure that he can do the same for me not that that is my priority but i have a firm faith and belief that he's able to do it you have to get to that point in life otherwise what are you doing you're wasting your journey you're wasting your time you need to literally get to that point where you believe in god and all that he can do there's christians with nice houses there's christians with nice cars they might be discreet they might be undercover because as well as being wealthy is a good thing we need to know that our main priority on earth is not material goods or possessions our main priority is god so yes there may be christians who are very rich very wealthy and they live the discreet life so it is a possibility it's not a crime it's not a sin we just need to have that balance solomon lived in the palace what he should have said to god oh no god this is too much money for me i give it back he should <laughs> i make myself laugh he should have said that he should have said that and even job oh how can i forget job oh my goodness job 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 after all of his trials god even added he added more than what he had before god is the god of addition multiplication but not division and subtraction but addition and multiplication so he can do that there are christians who are out here who live their best lives for god they're not demonic it's not everything that they do is a cult not everything that they do is satanic guys they exist 
they actually do exist ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 19 it says to every individual that god has given riches and possessions to he's also given them the ability to enjoy it guys enjoy your life on earth whilst you're in good health be merry be happy you know i came here to make you think i'm not pushing you to go into a life of seeking material things i'm here to help you grow your faith and seek god first don't change the scripture according to you where everything will be given to you and then seek god no because if we had to really seek god after everything was given to us some of us wouldn't be seeking god because (laughs) some of us (laughs) we came from nothing we came from nothing and what we have now is a product of the grace of god is a product of us seeking god like do you get what i'm saying i literally just want to leave you with these questions how much faith do you have in god what are you expecting god to do for you Hmm? is he really the primary desire of your heart how are you stewarding the gifts that god has given you what are you doing with what god has planted in your hand if you have not yet started to nurture your gifts and cultivate them now is your time where is your faith if you don't have faith pray for faith it will come the bible says ask and you shall receive i will do everything that you have made heard in my ears ask for faith it will be given to you those are the questions you need to ask yourself is god your primary desire is god your primary desire if he isn't oh you need to actually rethink your life rethink your strategy rethink your hierarchy of importance rethink your priorities list because for some of us it's it's boyfriend family god what (laughs) not even husband boyfriend i said that on purpose because some of you is not even husband is boyfriend Eh? some of us is even education god family some of us Let's let's let let me even say this. Mm. Some of us is church God. <laughs> what? The reason why I say that, yeah, very quickly. The reason why I say that is some people, yeah, they don't actually know God, but because they've just been used to serving in their church for so long, it's a habit to them. So that's why I'm saying church God. It needs to be God first. Then He's gonna give you the capacity to do every other thing that's it that's all why do you doubt the fact that god can elevate people the bible even says that he elevates people and allows them to sit in the high places with kings what (laughs) my god is able i really just wanted you to think i wanted you to think deeply think deeply about your decisions about the hierarchy of your life who is at the top hmm do you have faith in this God? Do you trust him the way you say you do? Do you have as much faith in him as you do that bad things will happen to you? The fear that you have that coronavirus is going to touch you. If you compare that to, to the faith that you have in God, you will see that your fear for coronavirus is higher than the faith that you have in God. That's a shame. What are your true intentions? What's the intentions of your heart? Is it God or is it other things? Because when it's other things, you need to rethink your strategy. You need to rethink that. You need to come back down to earth. I'm going to quickly pray and then I'm going to close. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God Almighty, Father, I pray that the word that i've spoken i pray that somebody may be enlightened i pray that it may push that it may propel someone to bow before your feet again and if not father i want people to get to a place where they they seek the answers for themselves and not wait for someone else to give them an answer God, I pray that the word that I have spoken today, that somebody's life has changed, somebody's perspective has changed, somebody's vision has changed, and it's pushed someone to draw near to you, to seek you first, above riches, above wealth, above a marriage, above children, above whatever else it 
is that they desire. Father, may you become the primary position in people's life. May you become the principal focus in people's life. Instead of us always just claiming and saying that we are Christocentric and everything that we do revolves around Christ, let us live it. We want to live Christocentric lives where you are our focus. You are our priority. You are everything that we need and more. Father, I dedicate this video into your hands. Every single person that tuned in, Father, I pray that they may not hear me, but let them hear you. In the name of Jesus, I pray everyone remains blessed. I cover our families with the blood of Jesus, body, mind, and soul, our homes and ourselves. Father, I pray that we may enter into a time of rejoicing after this confinement. In fact, let us be in joy now because confinement is soon coming to an end. Quarantine is soon coming to an end. You are greater than coronavirus. You are greater than anything that has ever come. But the Bible Bible says there is nothing new under the sun so nothing is a surprise to you it may be a surprise to us humans but it's not a surprise to you you know everything you see everything and you are in control we love you so much we say thank you for this time and we say amen 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 thank you so much for tuning in thank you 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 I pray that you all remain blessed. Um, yeah, I just, I hope that somebody's mind has been renewed and changed and shifted and all of that. Thank you so much. Please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. Make sure you share this because maybe somebody needs to hear it. This can be your form of evangelization. God is good. God is real. Jesus loved you. Ooh, loved? What? <laughs> Anyways, Jesus loves you. Happy Easter because um, it's Easter, guys. Like, Jesus is risen. Happy Easter. And, yeah, have a lovely evening, night, morning, wherever you may be and whatever time you may be watching this. Um, stay blessed. And see you in my next video. Um, goodbye. Oh, no, that was such a dead bye. <laughs>